So next, I guess I gotta click it and then hit. There we go. Okay. So why do we want to repurpose blog posts? So the content you've already written, y'all know I'm all about foundation. You really shouldn't be doing a lot of other things, uh, spending time in all the places, doing all the, the things, if you haven't built your blog foundation. So that is the actual blog content. Your content is your foundation for everything else. So, you know, your blog posts are going to help you get those subscribers. They're going to help you if your monetization is part of your plan and all of that. So where does video play into this? When you repurpose your content you've already created in written format and put it on platforms such as YouTube, specifically YouTube, you're gonna reach a larger audience. And so at the end of the day, our goal is to reach people, right? Like we are called to go out and share the gospel with the world and all of that stuff. And even if you're not a strictly Bible study blogger, whatever it is you do offer, you're going to have access to a much larger audience by creating a video oh. of content. Hey, Anna, how's it going? Turn mute. I don't know who that was. Okay, so number one, reach another uh, larger audience than what your blog by itself is able to reach because your blog can only reach an audience once the SEO takes effect and it starts getting indexed and people find your, your posts and they end up back on your site. Of course, you know, you have social media and things like that, but it can often take a while to see, you know, that reach happen. So the second thing, obviously, is to increase traffic to your blog, right? For those of you striving with your blog to reach the 50,000 sessions in order to monetize, having your content on YouTube and, and the other things we're going to talk about today can help drive more traffic to your website, right? Because in your... Uh, video descriptions, you would put links to blog posts or whatever else. Um, I am going to, can I mute everyone from here? There's a few people that I don't think are muted. Um, Lisa, I think, oh, you're muted. Okay. I'm trying to see who else here. Okay, I think we're good. Okay, sorry about that. Oh, no, somebody mute. Okay, just joined. Okay, so the next one is to increase your monetization potential. Your video provides you such a next level opportunity for monetization. Your blog can get to ad revenue. You can sell products from your blog, your affiliate marketing from your blog, but all of that is dependent upon the traffic coming to your blog. If you also have a video channel like YouTube, you can monetize that channel. You can also use affiliate links and also promote your products, again, to that much larger audience. And then the last one is increasing your subscriber potential because, again, like if they came to your blog and subscribe. Now you have a channel, a video. People are finding you via video that increases the amount of people that might end up on your email list. And of course, there's a method to all of that to making it happen. It's not like you just create a video and boom, all of this magically appears. But this significantly increases your growth potential and whatever the goals are that you have for your long-term blog plan. Okay, so blog posts. So we're talking specifically about the blog content you already have. And I'm going to give some examples of how to, like, how to take what's in written form and put it in a video. But just like the overview, your blog post can be repurposed to a full-length YouTube video multiple YouTube shorts. So if you don't know what those are, um, you know, YouTube has always been like the regular videos. Well, they now have a very specific feed called shorts and those are 60 second videos, uh, 60 seconds or less, which is basically Instagram and Facebook reels <laughs> that people just repurpose to YouTube. And then of course, uh, the content that you create in these short forms can also be shared across your other social media channels that I just mentioned. 
as well as Pinterest idea pins. If you didn't know, static images, if you add them like new pins all the time to your Pinterest, you're not really gonna see much from those efforts. But if you're doing idea pins, you will, because that's what Pinterest is doing now. So these short form videos that you create can also be shared on Pinterest. Now, the thing I like most about all this is that you can just create one and share it in all the places and then kind of time saving and so forth. So YouTube, let's talk about YouTube as a channel. So we're not just talking about creating videos for Instagram. You know, if you're on Instagram, you should know by now that just sharing static pictures with verses or static images, period, you're not gonna see growth from that. You have to start doing those reels, which are short form videos. So YouTube specifically is very, very important to this, this goal. Why? YouTube, first and foremost, is a search engine. Just like your blog content is being indexed for Google and other um, written search engines, so Yahoo, Bing, things like that. You, uh, by the way, Google does have a tab for video searches in addition to written content. But YouTube specifically is a search engine. And People literally go there to find content. Oftentimes that content is the same as the content on your site. They're just looking for it in a video format. YouTube, of course, new audience needs more blog traffic. We mentioned that already. Video content is easier to consume. It gives you as a creator more a creative approach than the written content. As you know, for written content, you have to, you know, the, the formatting and keeping it all to make the Google bots happy so they understand it. It's a lot of work, but with video, you, you still got to be okay with being on video, but you have a little more creative flow in your talk and your personality. And, and that's really what engages people. And so video is super, super important. I'm going to link a couple of links here that I want to show you. Um, just some data that I came across in my research today for how much video is actually being consumed by people now, right? And it's, it's pretty interesting. It started before COVID, but since COVID kind of put everyone in lockdown and all that stuff, um, these numbers significantly went up. So let me open my notes here. Open notes, why are you not opening? There we go. All right, so this one, I'm going to open both of them and then go back to it. And this is very important for you to understand how important it is for those of you who've ever been on the fence about like, I just don't want to do videos. Well, if you want to grow, you need to do videos like that's the bottom line. So these are some statistics. Um, in 2020 alone, there were well over 3 billion Internet users consuming video content. I'm actually gonna share these links uh, in the chat and I'll also share them in the Facebook group when I upload this video tomorrow so that you can like do the research as well. Um, in 2021, it was reported that online videos had an audience reach of 92% among internet users worldwide, right? And so you can go through these to just see, and it's not just for commerce, not just for selling products, simply doing a search but looking for it in a video format versus a blog post that you scroll through and click and read. I guess what they're trying to say is people just don't want to read anymore, right? And unfortunately, uh, social media, Instagram, especially TikTok, has really taken our attention span from not wanting long form readable stuff. They want to see things in video. You know, if you're offering tips and tutorials and how to's, it's much easier for them to understand in a video format. Um, but even with Bible content, you know, having someone explain it to you more in a devotional style manner versus just writing stuff out in a blog post, it really does help them um, kind of take in the information and understand it a lot better. This one here, let me see if I can make this page bigger. Maybe not. Um, globally, you can see consumer IP traffic. Um, consumer internet traffic. There's a lot of data stats in here, so they're kind of boring, but if you actually read through them, again, I'm gonna share this link, and it really shows how 
much of an increase video searches and how much video is consumed over written content in the last two to three years. It's, it's like crazy when you start diving into these um, statistics. Okay, so let me hop back over here to my thing. Okay, so in a nutshell, if you're not doing video, you're missing out on a huge opportunity. And so most of you already have blog content. And so taking what you've already done and simply repurposing it instead of just starting fresh, right? So you already kind of have all your blog posts. Hopefully you've done your research and the blog posts you have are satisfying search queries and all that stuff. So now you want to make a strategy for, okay, how do I turn it into video? So some other things uh, besides just your YouTube channel is your social media and YouTube shorts, which are basically the same thing. Um, TikTok came out with the way their videos are. And so all the other social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and um, even YouTube have created a new style. And that's why you see with Instagram, they're pushing reels. Facebook is pushing reels, Pinterest idea pens, and now YouTube shorts. Literally, it's the same video that you can share on all the platforms, which is really great for saving time. Um, one single blog post can make multiple short form videos. Okay, so this is where I wanna explain what that kind of looks like, just to kind of put it in perspective. And really it depends on what your content is, what type of blog post you have. But of course you would go into YouTube, do video keyword research, and there's some great tools for that I'll share in a minute. Let's take a blog post called you know, 15 Bible verses about community, or what does the Bible say about community, right? And so in that blog post, you're really just identifying the verses of scripture that are referenced in the Bible. So how do you turn that into a video? Well, the first thought would be to make a slideshow of each verse. You could do that, but I really don't think that would necessarily do well. I mean, it might get ranked because of keywords and stuff, but I don't think the audience would engage with that. So how do we turn that topic into a video? How about a short form video that's maybe five to 10 minutes long or 15 if you're long winded like I tend to be and deliver that topic, the idea of community, but in a devotional way. So what does community mean to us? Like what is from a biblical perspective, right? And you talk about, of course, referencing what the Bible says about it. And then you go into, you know, with the shutdowns and things in the last few years, community has seemed to dissipate a bit because people stop seeing each other, they stop gathering. And as a result, all these bad things are happening, depression and different things. And so it's really important that we get back together through life groups and things like that. And then you take it a step further to talk about the virtual community, how you don't have to have community with somebody you can literally reach out and touch. What we're doing right here is community. So you capture that in a 10, 10 or 15 minute video. That's the video for the blog post, which is so in the blog post, they're literally getting the 15 verses, but then here you have a different form of that same topic. So the SEO matches and on YouTube, that is how you would talk about it. Now we come to social media, YouTube shorts, right? So the short form version. So each of the verses of scripture, maybe that you had, um, you could do a quick breakdown of that video, or I'm sorry, that verse in 60 seconds, like a devotional. I don't know if y'all follow any of my videos, but I do a morning verse every day. And it's literally just me reading the verse and saying something about it. 60 seconds or less. Boom. You got 15 verses. There's 15 little YouTube shorts that you can also put on Instagram, Facebook, and share on Pinterest as an idea pen. So that's how you would capture all of that from one single video. Even me sitting right here, I'm not actually going to record it, but a 60 second would be like, so how do you find community in a digital world? Hey guys, say hi. These are my virtual friends across the planet. Boom, done. Upload, share it. That is a perfect video for a YouTube short or social media that has to do with the topic of your blog post. Everybody following? Does all this make sense? Is everybody excited? Y'all are like, I can't wait to get on video and show my face in the world. Yeah, y'all are like, no. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see, look at the next one. Okay, so those are kind of the main things, right? We want to build a video channel, i.e. YouTube, connect the dots, the video itself and the notes has a link to the blog post that it went with, as well as some other stuff. 
then the video is actually embedded in the blog post. So no matter which way they came to you, they get directed to the other channel as well. So you're getting cross traffic. So I want to step back up to whoops, YouTube really quick um, with the monetization goal that many of you have. So with your blog, the general ways we talk about with earning money is affiliate links, selling products, and finally getting your traffic to 50K so you can apply to Mediavine. There's other ad networks like She Media and Azoic. You could do those two with less than 50K, but generally speaking, 50K is kind of the standard. With YouTube, you can have ads on your YouTube the same way you have ads on your website. And I think it's through Google AdSense, but it's st strictly on YouTube. The qualification for that is 1,000 subscribers to your YouTube channel and 4,000 public viewing hours. And so this is where putting those embeds in the blog post, that's going to hopefully send traffic over in addition to the organic traffic that you would get within YouTube itself. Your videos can show up in Google video search results, again, getting more traffic. And so for the monetization, it's actually a little easier to reach ad network requirements with YouTube than it is with your blog, right? Because Google keeps messing things up and you make some progress and then tomorrow you wake up and half your traffic's gone. Like we're all dealing with that. YouTube is a little more stable and easier to, to reach that threshold. And so this last slide, well, not the last slide, thanks to the last slide. Other ways to repurpose those videos that you have created. So. First, we repurpose the content in the video. Now, how do we repurpose the videos, right? So we talked about social media and all that. But other ways to repurpose with the goal being to get those viewing hours up to 4,000, right? Getting more traffic to your videos. You have things in PDF form. Let's say you have devotional. So if you don't have them, look at all your content. Do you have a series on a certain topic that you could put in a devotional format? Instead of a devotional that's 10 pages of you just writing, remember, because people don't like to read anymore, they'd rather watch videos, <laughs> right? Um, you take each of those topics and then the video that you made for each post and you make a PDF and you put that PDF out for people for free. And instead of them having to read, you know, a thousand words, they click the link and watch the video, right? I've been doing that with a lot of my blogging content. So I had checklists and downloads and it was all just a lot of reading. And so I've been going through every single thing that I had a page of content, written content, simply made a video and put that in the PDF for them to watch instead of read. And the moment I started doing that, my views like shot up. I was like, why did I do this a year ago, <laughs> right? And so a lot of you are actually sitting on content right now already on your blog that not only can be repurposed just into the videos, but that you could actually create these free things to give away that link them more to your videos, right? And so there's a lot of things, courses, all of my courses now have video. I'm slowly going through replacing content with video. You know, in any kind of how-to content that you have, um, tips for doing this, how to do that, steps for this or whatever. We call those list posts. Any kind of content you have that way, go through and make a video for each of the steps, right? The thinking, of course, SEO, do your research, but even for some things that maybe they're not directly searching for in YouTube, there's no SEO for it. If people are downloading and taking your, your freebies, these checklists, these courses, whatever, then that's still sending traffic over to your channel sans SEO, like even if the SEO is not working because there is none. For the Bible study people who create all sorts of Bible study related materials, those video devotionals that go with it, or let's, you know, let's study the book of Psalms or whatever your content is, make little short form videos for them or little videos to go along with it, package them together in a PDF or a mini course or whatever. I say PDFs because if you do a course platform, you got to pay for that. And y'all know I'm cheap. So I already pay for one. But if I wasn't and I was doing this, you could simply put them in PDFs and then give those away for free on your blog to your email list, to whatever. And then when they open it and click each link, that's generating more traffic over to your channel and then possibly also back to your blog because 
in the video, you may have a link to a specific blog post where it elaborates on the topic. So, okay, so I know that was a lot. So now I want to open it up to questions because uh, I'm sure some of you have some questions about all of this. Um, I have been making a lot of videos for tutorials on like how to get your YouTube channel set up and, and I will have more tutorial videos, videos coming out um, to kind of help you down this path. But let's go ahead. I do see I have questions over here. So let me, let me stop share so I can get my bigger screen and open this up. Uh, Jen, Jean says, you make it seem so easy. <laughs> Viewing hours, my viewing hours, someone else. Yes, yeah, so the viewing hours is public, the other people watching your videos. And here's a mistake I made. So I'll just tell you all, all the mistakes I've made. I started my YouTube channel uh, four years ago when we launched Kingdom Bloggers because I had my courses. And so I would do videos and put them in the courses, but I made them all private. And many of those videos got a lot of views because, I mean, every day I get people signing up for my free courses all the time. None of those hours work. They were private viewing hours. And we're talking a couple of thousand. <laughs> Had I just left them public from the beginning, but so in my, um, the mistakes I made, the reasoning in my mind, I did not want to start my YouTube channel because I thought I had to have everything perfect, the perfect lighting, the perfect, right? I thought that I was wrong, right? Nobody cares what my background looks like. They care what I'm saying. So a few of my older videos, and this is really what got me thinking, like I went in, I went ahead and made them public just to see. I did the SEO on them just to make them good. Oh my goodness, how much traffic those videos are getting now. And I'm like, nobody has said anything that my lighting was bad, <laughs> right? Or whatever. And so I was making them just for my courses. But here's a reality. Even things that you have absolutely free on your website, if you like sell courses, let's say, people pay to have things packaged. Every bit of training that I put out uh, in my courses, literally there is a tutorial on my website for the exact same thing. But it takes a lot of effort to go search and find. And so people do prefer to have a package deal and they will pay for that. So if you under, like get that mindset, the stuff you already have, don't think in the mindset, well, I only want this for the my subscribers or my, my, my course students, whatever. Now, my mastermind group, things we do in there, I do keep those private because of the level of it. But so I just wanted to share that because that was a mindset that I have that I think a lot of us have. Instagram is so yesterday. And what I mean by that is the idea of perfection that we have all been brainwashed into believing that if we're going to be social media, anything, you know, influencers in this world, that we have to look a certain way and all this has to look a certain way. And that is simply not true. And the studies that have been coming out with video, you can, so I'm on TikTok and you can actually tell who just came from Instagram. They're like, fine, I guess I'll get on TikTok now because their videos are looking like Instagram and they don't get as much reach or engagement as the, I just came from outside working in my garden and I probably have chicken feathers in my hair kind of video or the videos with the bloopers, the videos with the just, you know, boring backgrounds. And what that is demonstrating is that people are tired of the fake portrayal of life that influencers have been trying to push on everyone for so long, even in the Christian world. So if you go on YouTube and, and anywhere, say Bible study, and so when I started doing that, this is what intimidated me. They were all these just perfectly lit, beautiful Bible study with the, the markers and the, you know, the Bible journal girl, right? There's like a hashtag for that. And I'm like, yeah, that's not me. <laughs> like, I mean, I just know. And that stopped me from doing it. But that was all that was there. So people like me looking for somebody like me didn't have anybody like me to find because people like me were too afraid to go out there and do it, if that makes sense. And so a few of y'all have been following me in other groups for a while here lately about the, I don't care how old you are, how young you are, how many wrinkles you have, how big, how small, how Walmart thrift rack kind of you look, there are people out there looking for videos 
of people like you <laughs> that they can relate to and believe and whatever. And Joyce, I am totally not bragging or picking on you because you always look flawless. There are women who need you, okay? But I'm saying to those who have had some one-on-one -on -one conversations with lately, people need your plainness. Your, I actually did a YouTube short. I'm not even kidding. And I'm like, in the camera, y'all see this? And then I had a tank top on. I was doing the bat wings. I was like, look at this. I said, I don't care. God can still use me. That video has had almost 400 views in the last two to three days with likes and comments and stuff, right? So my point is, forget about perfection. Don't wait until you think you have the perfect whatever. People need your content. And right now they're consuming it more in a video format. And so any fears or whatever you have about being on video, just get over it. Like seriously, <laughs> just get over it. <laughs> Because you are, you, you are still believing the lie that, that the enemy has planted in our minds, right? And so I know it's easier to say this than do it because I've been doing this for a long time. But, you know, my own fears are what stopped me from doing it sooner. And I would have seen a lot more success had I started it back before and not believed what I believed at that time. And so video now more than ever is literally where everything is going. And I hate to say this, but if you are hesitant or really fearful of stepping into the video, you know, being on, on video, you're really going to struggle with growth. Um, you know, we've seen Google and the constant updates and constant traffic losses. And this is where you have to start thinking outside the box to real ways to get more traffic organically, not with share threads, not with forced kind of traffic and freaking out mode, but things that truly are where the trends are going, video is not going to change. It is going to continue in that direction. Okay, let me go back to these comments here. Um, thanks, no problem. I'm so glad you're recording this because I can't keep up with all the great information. <laughs> Um, my videos on my channel are only my hands and no one seems to care. They haven't seen my face. Who is that? Wendy? Is that you, Wendy? Well, maybe put your face on it yep. and see how much it boosts it. <laughs> that, yeah, I was thinking about that for a video in a couple of weeks and see what seeing what happens. But yeah, it's just it's all the budgeting stuff. So like they only ever see my hands. Um, so I'm interested to see what if anything changes. Yeah. And it also has to do with relatability. You know, we live in a time when so much stuff is being put out there and we don't know if it's true or not. Mm -hmm. And having a face behind something makes it more personal, but also in drawing in your target audience, right? Mm -hmm. Like, like if I just showed my hands, like, Oh, she got wrinkly hands too. I think I'll follow her. Right. But to relate to the person, whether it's age or it yeah. season of life, you know, the mom, try, here's a good one. If you're a stay at home mom trying to be a mom blogger, let your kids crawl on you while you're doing these videos, mm -hmm. because that's real. That's what you're struggling with. And so when you don't show that side of it, it's not believable. How many have seen the mom bloggers on Instagram, right? Clean shirts. I, I don't know a mom with children that small that have clean shirts, right? The back's <laughs> perfect. You know, the kids are quiet and you're like, you are not a mom. Don't be lying, right? <laughs> like, you got to show the realness of it so people will believe it. <laughs> um, and a lot of that started coming out when Zoom really kicked off during the lockdowns because we'd see the blooper reels of people trying to do work calls and the kids would come in or the husband would come in in his underwear. Just like that's life, you know, <laughs> let that stuff be shown. Don't consider them bloopers anymore. Um, let me see. Perfect has been my biggest hang up. Yeah. Perfection. And you know, it's the funny thing. We Christians are the worst because two things were the worst at the identity in Christ and confidence part and the trusting God. Right. So when someone's struggling, she's like, just trust God. He's got this. But then when we have a struggle, we're like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? And we're kind of in freak out mode. People are like, didn't you just tell me to trust God? <laughs> but with the identity and the confidence, we're guilty of that too. We, we write content that tells people to believe in themselves and you, who you are, who God says you are and all this, but
but then we also get caught up in that lie of the, that has just been like a brainwashing of society in the last, I don't know, few years, thanks to Instagram. And, and I think we do it without realizing it, but we are perpetuating that lie as well when we don't sans makeup, you know, like the real stuff. And so the more you can get comfortable doing it, and seeing the results, I think Sandy posted a pitch. You had posted something where you're just like, whatever. And you're like, oh my gosh, all these comments and people and the impressions and like people want that. And so wherever you are, I'm not saying for all of you to go put your Walmart clothes on and get dirty and go on camera. But if that's you, then be you, right? Like some days I come on here and I'm in my 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 gym clothes. Like I don't even get stressed up for y'all because that's me. I don't have time for that, right? I work in a chicken yard and walk around and I actually have a video where I'm making fun of young trendy Christian bloggers not in a mean way but I'm older they're young my fashion is Walmart and Academy fake Crocs right this is my life as a Christian blogger people ate that up because it was so real and contrary to what we see being defined like many people and here's where I come from this my 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 motivation so there's a range of ages here on this screen. <clears throat> and, and if there's any men who watch this later, I'm talking to you too, not just the women. But there are so many people who feel God giving them this prompting to, to go out into the, you know, to, to do this calling of, I call a Christian influencer, whether you're a blogger or YouTube, wherever you are in this. And whether you're straight up Bible study or you're doing it through whatever business you have, right? No matter where you fall in the spectrum. But because of that lie that's been perpetuated, a lot of older people, a lot of, by society's definitions, not so pretty people, right? A lot of people who have what we have been told are flaws do not step into this calling because they believe that lie, right? And that lie has held so many people back from truly stepping into the calling God has put on them because they don't think they're pretty enough. They have too many wrinkles. They have gray hair. They don't have the money to buy, or maybe they, I have the money. I just don't see the point of spending hundred dollars on something I can get for $10 at Walmart. Right. And they don't think that whatever it is, is good enough to be here on this camera ministering to anybody because nobody cares, but that is so not true. And the better we are, those of us who maybe carry those beliefs to get out there and own it, like the bat wings and the gray hair and be okay with it and make fun of it. That's giving the person in that's watching you permission, right? Everyone's just waiting for somebody else to take the first step. Nobody wants to be the first person, but when you get out there and do it and you own it and you rock it, people are like, wow, she's doing it. So can I, right? If any of y'all are on TikTok, or I, I think I've seen them on Facebook too. I just, <laughs> I spent a lot of time on TikTok lately. Um, full disclaimer. Uh, larger women, overweight women, right? Where forever it's like, that's just, we don't show that. Like we don't do commercials with large women, the, you know, the obese. And well, now that's like the trending thing, but there are a few influencers on, on TikTok specifically who do not like, they've owned it, right? They let other women know so much so there's a, a girl who teaches pole dancing and she's like 300 pounds, right? I love watching her because she is so confident in what she's doing. And she's like, everything has told me that I cannot do this. And she's not doing it like in a strip club. She's doing it like for fitness. <laughs> just, I don't watch strip club videos, just putting that out there. Um, but she's trying to show women like all the things that we've been told we can't do because of whatever, my weight, my age, my whatever, they were wrong. And so I think it's up to us, wherever we are in that uh, lie, belief, to encourage and empower the next generation of people that that's just not simply true. You know, so what I'm saying is it all rests on us girls and guys who may be watching this. <laughs> Changing of society's viewpoints rests with us. <laughs> that's what I'm saying here. So, okay. Um, let's see. Yeah, don't let it stress you out and keep from content. I'm guessing that short videos should be done in portrait orientation, should longer videos. Yeah, so if you're going to do 
the shorts, the videos meant for social media. So that's anything 60 to 90 seconds. You just do it from your phone this way. Don't do it this way because where the camera is and the, you want to look at people. So, okay, just to show you real quick, because my camera's on the top of my computer here. So y'all, it doesn't look like I'm looking at you, right? I'm like looking down. That's not personable. You want to kind of look at the camera so they feel like you're really talking to them. And so when you do the videos for social media, for Instagram or whatever, you want to keep it in uh, up and down mode. Don't ever do it like this um, because it'll just look weird. Also, the way they optimize in social media, they're meant for up and down. Like that's how the feed works. Now for your long form videos, you know, five minutes or longer, I would say, um, your regular YouTube videos, <clears throat> I would actually record those on your computer or laptop. Um, you can get, like I have this, well, you can't see it, but it's just this little camera that sits on top and plugs in. Um, and then there's editing tools and stuff that you can use that are really easy. Um, I was wondering how visually appealing they need to be. So I'm hearing, I don't have to worry so much about the visual aspect. No, I mean, you maybe don't want to sit in a dark room just because dark, dingy, but the lighting and the perfection of it, like right now, the light's coming through this window here and it's sunny outside. So if I record before it gets daylight, it's kind of brown. Y'all have seen my videos. They're not bright. Um, if you're doing the ones from your phone, there's way, you know, just walk around and find a good real lighting, like sunlight, natural light from a window. But as far as the... So like your, your full videos, right? The long form, if you just do them here, this is usually where I do them. Um, I could take my laptop and sit out in my garden, right? Like kind of find your thing. And then that's kind of your thing. This one girl I follow, she's always sitting on her bed with her laptop. She's just sitting there and that's where she talks from. It's always in her bed. I was like, I wish I could just sit in my bed all day, but that's how all of her videos have been. Um, for the social ones, that's where you get to get creative, moving around. And I have some tutorials that I'll share. We actually did a challenge in the Facebook group a, a few weeks back and everyone was doing really great with them, learning how to move around. And, you know, the biggest thing is just the lighting. I mean, if it's too dark, people can't see you. But if it's not perfectly, you know, studio lighting, nobody cares about that. They just want to see your face, really. Um, longer videos should be horizontal, yeah. Um, Thank you for this. Susan says, uh, this is my hangup, my crappy cluttered small house with no pretty spots to video in. Okay, but your ministry is to other moms, right? Like, don't you do like the homeschool and, and Bible and all that? So like, that's probably what their house looks like. <laughs> and you got to show them that you can do Bible study and take care of your kids right there in that big old mess, right? Then you make shorts where you kind of make fun of it right? Like you make fun of the mess and, and that like, you know, when we make fun of the things, I don't know if y'all watch the reels and stuff there on Facebook and TikTok, a lot of it is making fun of things. And, and I don't mean in a mean way, but like marriage, things my husband does, you know, there's the one where the woman was trying to get her kids to the boys to urinate in the toilet without making a mess. And there was a whole dance to it, right? Like you're making fun of the things that you deal with. And that's what gets people to really relate to you. Um, yes, Joyce always looks good. I'm just reading through the comments, Joyce. <laughs> uh, Jen says, so I'm not trying to sell any products right now, but a blog, devotional content, and practical Christian living. Will videos about these ass these kinds of topics get views? Is it worth my time since I don't have much to post videos along with these things? Yes. Again, it's going to come down to, and here's the big part of it. Just like with your blog content, you have to do your research, right? With your blog, you got to research, like using keywords everywhere to see what are people actually Googling. You shouldn't write about things that nobody's searching for. You can do the same thing in YouTube. There's a really great tool called TubeBuddy. I'll share that link um, as well. And it enables you to do really deep dive keyword research to find out what people are actually searching for in YouTube. It also enables you to kind of look at other channels to see like the data and stats. Uh, if you ever did the keyword research, um, competitor research from the bootcamp with HREFs, it's kind of that same thing, but in YouTube. 
And so even if you don't have a lot of topics on your blog already, you could just start creating the videos. And I've had a few people who are actually going to do that. They're like, I'm just so tired of writing. I just, ugh, I can't anymore. Videos take less time and they're more fun, right? Because you get to be yourself and you don't have to constrain to the format. Just get on there, be crazy and yourself and say a few things. And I mean, it's a little more than that, obviously, but you have the more creative um, ability there than you do. And so maybe you just spend a year making videos and then later on go back and start building the blog. Either way, both are a search engine. And if you can do them simultaneously, concurrently, great. If you can do one and then the other, great. I would say right now, if you have to choose one or the other, I would probably say starting with some video might be a better boost to get you going because of just Google's gone a little crazy lately. Um, let me see. Let's see. Wendy says those types of videos get views all the time. Yeah, they absolutely do. Um, Diane says, if you podcast or want to podcast, you can also repurpose videos for that too. You can strip the audio. Yeah. So, so I record my videos with zoom. Um, literally I just launch a meeting and I'm the only one there and I record myself. Um, or these that I'm where you do live. So any of y'all that do live things, maybe you do a zoom live with a Bible study or, you know, whatever, record them, upload them, put some good notes in there. Those will get views. Um, but if you uh, are for the podcasters, um, you could actually, there's different podcast recording uh, platforms. I have a few friends that do podcasts locally here where I live, and they actually record theirs via Zoom so that it has the video because it gives you a video and an audio file. So you upload the audio to the podcast one and then have the video as well. But yeah, your blog content. And here's, so some people had asked me a while back about a podcast and their blog. Your the written content for your podcast should not just be the show notes. Show notes have no SEO value, right? It's just a recap of everything you said, including all the ums, right? I've seen some show notes where they literally put a replay of the, the, the notes, like literally every word, what is that, a transcript. And I'm like, I don't, I mean, they said um a lot and it was in the transcript. The better way to do that with whatever the topic right? Because when you're just talking, you're just talking and who knows what comes up in the topic of discussion. But you take that topic and you find SEO to write the blog post or you find your blog post that you've already written. Well, let's just talk about this, right? Because podcasts are usually more of a, just a dialogue discussion. There's not always a step-by-step -step, like in order of things. So definitely for those of you who are planning to do a podcast or maybe you already have one, um, you can add a video element to it if you didn't record it that way from the beginning. Um, there are some channels where they do only devotionals. Yes, there are quite, if you go into YouTube and just type in devotional, daily devotion, morning devotion, Bible study, um, all of that. Uh, this is how I record mine. I start my own meeting. Yeah, somebody had, was it you, Sandy, that had asked? Yeah, <laughs> and I never really thought about it. I was like, yeah, I just, start a zoom meeting and I'm the only one there talking to a screen, hoping people will listen to me. <laughs> and, and I'll be honest, it's when you first do them, like with you guys here on the screen, I see your faces and you're reacting to what I say. And it's like being in front of people. But when you start recording yourself, talking to just a screen, it's one thing to do it on your phone. It's kind of awkward. Just like, Hey, you know, Instagram, whatever. But when you sit here on a screen, <laughs> and you're just giving a presentation you don't have any visual cues from your audience to let you know if you're boring them or not <laughs> so it is weird at first but the more you do it you get a little better with it uh Wendy says a good podcast outline will make the writing easier absolutely that's just like outlining your blog content those podcast outlines are great uh, okay all right so any other questions anything anybody wants to ask or ping on it or I don't know whatever really y'all got nothing for me please I have a question okay go ahead Hannah yes um first of all everything you said is true because we started a, a YouTube channel in church and it took us some months to actually get um, comfortable using the camera so we had to you know practice for a long time just just like you said but for you know, we just started. I just started this blogging, and is 
I'm on my, I think my 29 block. Do I pause now and start video from content or do I just start making videos by the beginning of next year? Um, because I don't know, because you know, you said we shouldn't chase all the things. Forget about making, um, having an email list. Well, I would say in your, do in I, your case, I, I, so you had mentioned before that you had kind of written about all the topics and you would ask, you know, what should I do next? I would probably say to maybe focus on video for a while. Don't worry about starting your email list because if you're going to start an email list, you really need to have a full plan, what you're going to deliver, how often you're going to write them, what you're going to say. And that takes a lot of time. But if you create mm. video content, that's kind of giving you stuff that you can then later use to send out to your email list, right? And so that would be my recommendation is to maybe spend some time just knocking out some video content to go with the content you already have, maybe plus some extra stuff that you find just in the YouTube searches and then kind of go from there. Okay, so I can just, so do I make videos for now and post writing for now? While you're still writing? Or just combine both at the same time? Yes. Do I just focus on videos for now and post writing? So I would say that is going to depend on how good you are at both of them. So if you are to a point where you just knock out a blog post and you can just knock out a video, then sure, do them, do them at the same time, write your blog post, make the video, and then push it out. But if you're just getting started, it's going to take you a while to kind of get familiar with the video process and everything. So I would say, based on what you've said, you have already published on your site, maybe just take a time out and just spend maybe the next month making videos. No, no new written content, just make videos for the content you already have. That way you're getting practice with making the videos. Then when you get to a point, so like me, I can write a blogging tips blog post and make the video all in one day. Because I've been doing this so long that I just have the process down. So if you're just getting started, you probably should not try that at home. <laughs> so, warning disclaimer, because it'll probably overwhelm you. So I would say, yeah, stop writing for a little while and just make videos for the content you've already created. Okay, more or less like taking a break for a month to make video content for the articles I already have of my blog. Then after that, when I'm done for like a month, then I can go back to writing, if, yes. if that's what you mean. Yes. Yes. Something like that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Alicia. Oh, wait. Susan said short form videos. Do you always record on TikTok or can you also record on your phone and upload pros cons of doing that? Okay. So that's a good question. And I, I'm actually going to make a bunch of good training videos for this. But so record on your phone directly, record in TikTok, record in Instagram, which is better. I think it really depends on you. I don't like recording from my phone directly simply because um, the lighting, unless I'm outside, if I'm outside in, in the outside place, the lighting is perfect. But inside, just the way the lighting is for the phone screen and all that, it, it just looks weird. And so TikTok, so I'm in Texas. Unfortunately, I don't have access to all the filters in Instagram because of, I don't know, some political nonsense going on that we don't have access to it. So normally I record my face type videos in TikTok first, publish it there, download that, and then repurpose it to all the platform. The filter in TikTok, and it's not a filter that makes me look fake. It just, it, it makes the lighting look right, right? And so really, I think it's just a matter of your personal choice. I would try each one and see which one you like not the perfection of it, not making you look 10 years younger <laughs> or, you know, big eyelashes. There's some weird filters out there. Um, but the one that you just like how it looks and it looks, you know, okay. And then just kind of use that as your standard. Um, all of mine that are my face, I always record in TikTok because I'm trying to build my TikTok channel. So that's giving me content for there. And then I use an app called SnapTik to download that video without the watermark. And then I upload it to Pinterest as an idea pin. I upload it to YouTube as a short and to Instagram as a reel. And if I think about it, Facebook, but I really, Facebook irritates me. So I don't add anything there. Um, but that's just my personal thing. 
Um, let's see. I normally record on my phone or computer. Zoom lets you download to the computer. Is that where you edit them from? What is the benefit of recording in Zoom being just recording via computer? Also, does Zoom let you choose portrait mode if you're using computer versus red? Okay, so first question. Is that where you edit them? So for my full videos, I download them from Zoom, gives you an MP4 file, so I record it and it downloads to my computer. I use uh, an editing software called Filmora and I upload the video into that. Now, I'm pretty simple. A few of my earlier videos, tutorials, like vlogging stuff, I had like these text overlays that would pop in and would hit the points. I'm like, that's taking too much time. They can just listen to me. Plus I have captions enabled. So you're getting everything I'm saying. So the only reason I upload them in there is to cut off the dead space at the beginning and end, right? Like when the video starts and you're like, hey guys or the end where you're like okay bye bye and then you have to go find the button there's like a dead space so i just cut those off and then i uh, upload them directly to youtube from there now if you want to add like megan from megan ellen ministry she's doing all these bible study videos like she's doing this whole thing uh, part of this project we're doing so her videos have a lot of editing because as she's going through each part of the lesson she puts a slider on the screen with the text and and so hers take a little longer she uses OBS, uh, O, B as in boy, S as in Sam, which is a free video recording software that it's open source. You can download it for free and use it. Takes a little bit of a learning curve to figure out what you're doing, but I've used it in the past and it's a, it's a good option. So your question is, why would you not just do it from your, your computer? If you have a newer computer, um, the, the camera in it might be great quality or the software that's built in. But like my computer is a little older, like five or six years. So the video recording and editing isn't that great. And so the videos just don't look that good because it's an older model computer. And so that's why I use Zoom because it's a more updated type of recording. Uh, but if you, I would say test it. Most computers come with video recording and you have a camera built in. I have this next it's called Nexigo. It's a camera I bought off of Amazon because my camera in my computer just was horrible. Um, even on Zoom, it was horrible. But if you have that built in, try it. See how the videos look. If it works, great. It just, some people's computers, it doesn't work well because the computer's old. Um, let's see, other question. Also, does Zoom let you choose portrait mode if you're using the computer versus your phone? Um, I've never, I don't really use Zoom on my phone unless I'm just attending a meeting to watch. Um, so I don't know for sure how the Zoom app works as far as recording. Um, I would say if you're gonna record the regular videos that need to be in a uh, vertical or horizontal way, what is that, landscape, it's probably better to do it from a computer. Um, but I would just test it and see. But again, I, I don't use the app enough to know if, if it's, something you could do in there. Susan, you can record it on your phone and then upload it to other platforms. Uh, okay, bye Wendy, I think she left already. Um, if we're not currently on Instagram or TikTok, do we need to do both for the short videos? No, 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 you can record the video on your phone. Again, it's all about lighting. I would not sit in your house under a, a yellow dim light and record it because it's just, while I said they don't need to be perfect, you still wanna have some, some decent lighting so they're not dark and dingy, right? And so uh, like for me, my, ed, my window of recording is like, cause it gets, dark, it gets daylight here around 6, 45, seven, but the sun is on the other side of my house. So my recording here in my office to get the back to be bright enough that it looks not dingy is about 9 a.m. So I don't usually record any videos before 9 a.m. unless I'm on my phone and I, I'm literally out in the backyard with the natural lighting. Natural lighting, i.e. the sun, the window, is better than any ring light. So, well, y'all can't see. I have a ring light back there. And then I, <laughs> so that's not a ring light, that big bright light. That's actually an arrow garden to grow lettuce inside. But the light on it is the same light that's on a ring light. <laughs> and so it has really good lighting potential capabilities, but 
sunlight is always a better option when you have that. And so positioning your, com your computer or your laptop, that's why I like laptops because you can move it around as the sun moves throughout the day um, is always the better option. But you don't need to be on TikTok and Instagram. You can totally just record them on your phone and upload them to Shorts. There are some phone editing apps. Filmora Pro is one of them. So there's a Filmora app and a Filmora for desktop. It's two different things. Um, I have the paid version. I think there's a free version. I'm not quite sure, but I have the paid version for both. They're super easy to edit uh, your videos, cut out dead space, add overlays, you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, let's see. iMovie is great for Apple computers. Filmora is great for PCs. I use DaVinci Resolve, which requires a fast computer. Yeah, iMovie... I think my computer actually came with iMovie, but my camera that's built into the computer was so old that I couldn't get it to work right. Filmora is awesome. I love Filmora. Um, Diane says she seconds iMovie and how uh, Jean, John, Jean, I don't know if I'm saying her name right. Um, she had to go. Okay. All right. What else? Any other questions? I have a question for you. Sure. I was interviewed. I was on Facebook, like a Facebook Live, um, a pastor from church, and it was through a counseling center. And I talked about my chronic pain. But so it's on Facebook. Could I? Is there a way to? Can I get that on YouTube somehow? Like it, it was shot through Facebook, through Facebook Live, and it's there. Is you there should a way be able to download the MP4 if you go to that Facebook post. Um, let me see. I'm not sure if you can do it for videos that weren't, so it was shared on their channel, not yours. Exactly. So it's through like business, like I think it's, you know, a business page or whoever through a, yeah, Facebook page, not my personal page through yeah. there. I'm, I'm not really sure. Let me find the reels here. Hold on. Um, if you go to this one. manage yeah you can save well that saves it to your videos i'm not really sure holly do you know i know you know a little bit about this stuff i don't know if she is there i'm here oh there Sorry. you are um if you need to get the mp4 from another facebook profile page a lot of times you can actually use a third party app to record your full screen and then edit that down to just the size. So for example, the OBS would work for that. Otherwise you would have to ask the owner of that video to download the MP4 and then give it to you. Okay. Yeah, if so, it's on your own profile, you can download the video, but I didn't think you could do it from someone else's. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. If the video is public, you actually can take it as long as it's set to public. You can just Google um, Facebook video downloader and you can go over to the page where your video is. If it's public, you can copy the link, put it into there and um, it will download it and give it to you. Oh, great. It is public. Okay. Yeah. As long as the link is public. Uh, otherwise those even those like sketchy third-party app uh, like links and stuff will not they will prevent you but if it's public it's all yours I did it all the time for a news broadcast and I was poaching constantly from people's Facebook pages to be like oh so they, this is this is a quote from what they said on their Facebook page and I was taking those for free because they were public and you can just google it Facebook you know video downloader okay oh great thank you that is great to know or Loom, yeah. Uh, Holly says you can use OBS or Loom, and yes, public is different and makes it Creative Commons, so. All right, so was this helpful? Is this like getting everybody's juices, creative juices flowing on like kind of where to go next? Um, I know the tech techie side of it might be a little intimidating for some of you, so I'm hoping to get some videos created here. Or, 
Yeah, I've been in like a video marathon this week. I've been recording anywhere from five to 10 videos a day <laughs> to, wow. get on to, my upload, to my YouTube That's channel. Cute. Every time one of y'all asked me a question in the group, like whatever my next video I was going to do, I'm like, okay, let me go do this video real quick so that I could give an answer. Because normally I would make a quick loom, but I'm like, if I'm going to take the time to record myself giving you the explanation, I may as well just go ahead and make a video for YouTube. Um, but I'm going to try to get some step-by-step like just all the technical stuff, because I know it can be overwhelming at first. Um, we had, like I said, been doing the video challenge in the Facebook group. We, it's, if there's a guide for us. If you didn't do it and you want to do it, just go to the guides and start with step one. And that was more just to get you comfortable. Like it wasn't stuff you would necessarily share unless you wanted to. You just upload the file to our group. But it was more a matter of just, for those of you who've never done video, to get comfortable talking to yourself on your camera, on your phone. <laughs> and like knowing where to look and, you know, don't be like slaying around, you know, you learn from watching yourself. You don't get better until you critique yourself doing it. And when I say <clears throat> critique yourself, I don't mean critique yourself to the point of ridiculousness, but critiquing yourself to get better, right? Like, you know, look up a little higher or stop moving around so much. So I did this news interview one time when I first got out of the military and I wasn't nervous, but they put me in a spinny chair, right? <laughs> At the news desk. And that is like the worst thing to do to somebody who has ADHD. And so I watched the replay of it that night on the six o'clock news. And this is me the whole time they were talking to me. So after that, I, I, was, help, I was doing a lot of work with veterans. So I got to go on the news a lot. And so from that point forward, I would say, could you lock the spin before we go live? <laughs> that way I couldn't turn around and move so much. So it's just things like that that you don't realize you do until you start doing it. Um, and then just getting comfortable. Really, that's the part. Like, I think the fear is the part that keeps us from doing it so much. It's like, oh, I just, I can't go on camera. And the one thing, I'll just say this. If you say, I don't like how I look on camera, you look exactly like you do in person. <laughs> you're literally the same person, only you're not used to seeing yourself. So, you know, own it, whatever it is, um, and just kind of start getting more comfortable with doing that. And Diane says, well, that's scary. Yeah. Um, uh, you said it earlier, if you do need a live Bible study recorded and upload good notes, please make a video how to upload good notes to that video. Yeah, I, that's part of what we're working on, Sandy. We'll, we're going to have a whole lesson on that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, video is where it's at. Most of you already have the content you need to get started. You are the only thing getting your way of getting started. Like, you're, you know, just doing it. And so I encourage you to start trying. Um, if you don't want to upload it anywhere yet, you don't have to. Just start recording them things on your phone and then watching it. You can upload it to our Facebook group to get feedback. Um, but that is the only way that you can get better because somebody out there needs the message that you have to share. You just have to get out of your own way so that you can start sharing it in a way that people will receive it. So... Leanne, could you just speak for a second to the amount of time that you spend? You're saying you did you know, five videos and stuff. Um, so for me, that kind of video would be an addition to my schedule. Mm -hmm. and, and that's okay. But I was just curious, what, what would be reasonable? Or how do you schedule your life with this kind of new addition to what you're offering? So that's kind of a difficult question because each person's videos are going to be different lengths. Um, and, and how I do it, I definitely don't recommend anybody try this at home. <laughs> it's like a danger zone here in my brain. But the first part is doing, like learning it, right? You've got to learn how to do it. Like when you first started blogging, then after a while, you're like, okay, I got my process and I know what I'm doing. So it gets faster and easier. But I would say it, it also is going to depend on, are you doing video and content at the same time or written plus video? Are you just trying to take video and make video for stuff you've already done? Like wherever that's it. So whatever time you've already committed to whatever like blogging thing you're gonna do, maybe just stop writing new content for a while and just spend that time creating videos for the stuff you already have. So that might be one way, especially if you are pressed for time. 
Like I do this all day. So I can literally sit here for four hours and just record videos. Um, I have a window because <clears throat> again, the lighting and then what time my son works nights. So what time he wakes up 11, 1130 to for lunch. So once he's up, like there's no recording videos because they're noisy. And so the weekends are off because like, people are here and well, they talk. Um, even though I ask them not to, they still talk. So I have just that short window. And so I just knock out as many video and that way I do it. I record, record, record. And then they're all on my computer. That way in the afternoon, when everybody's up and making noise, I can start editing them because I don't need quiet people to edit videos I've already rec uh, recorded. So I, I think it's just going to be each individual person adjusting what they are doing and figuring out where they can fit the video part in, but how long it takes. So obviously the video, video, like the long form, I mean, they can be any length. I mean, they could be five minutes or 45 minutes, whatever the content is. But I will say, so with YouTube, remember I mentioned 1,000 hours and 4,000 public, or sorry, 1,000 subscribers, 4,000 viewing hours. That's your monetization threshold. YouTube shorts, the 60 second videos that go on the shorts reel will help you build those subscribers. They don't count towards monetization viewing hours. But the more people you get following you, the more people will watch those other videos. So shorts are easy. I'll go out in the back in the afternoon once I'm done with everything, literally just sit down on the concrete and be like, hey guys, what's up? I don't really say that, but three 60 second videos on whatever topic I feel like talking about. And then boom, boom, boom. There's three TikTok videos, three Pinterest idea pens, three Instagram, whatever. And then I upload them all to shorts. I might not do it that day. I might do it the next morning or something, but any pockets of time. So here's a hack for, so this is bonus material. So here's a hack for creating the short stuffs. And when I say short, I just mean 60 second videos, whether you put them to YouTube or wherever. So this is not normal to most Christian women because we are taught not to be vain and not be like looking at ourselves all the time and whatever, but take your phone and utilize every opportunity. So here's an example. My husband and I go to the meat market and I stay in the car while he goes inside. So here's me in my car, la la la, right? And I'll do one or two videos while I'm waiting for him to go inside and buy meat for us a barbecue. Um, maybe you're at some random place, being in your car, something about that visual aesthetic seems to boost views on videos, I've noticed. But don't always think you have to be in your perfect setting, wherever that is, to always do them. Get in the habit of recording your social media ones as you're taking a walk with your dogs, as you're washing dishes, right? Sit the phone up on the counter, hit play and drink your coffee and say, you know, hey, YouTube, what's up? Like, I mean, don't say that, but you know what I mean? Um, visual cues that relate or help even so this is one you've probably seen a lot imagine I'm in my bathroom and I'm brushing my hair or I'm putting my my moisturizer on that is the get ready with me g-r-w-m is the acronym for it. that's a thing that seems to boost views so the algorithm treats it differently than if you're just sitting in front of your computer and so just the random moments throughout the day that, you know, people aren't there bothering you. Just take a moment, record your video like that. And then have a, have a phone camera roll full of just random videos that you don't know what you're going to do with. Here's another thing. Not every video do you have to be talking. So if you ever, if you look at the videos, sometimes the person's just pondering <laughs> and they're, they're sorted to the side of the screen so there's white space or dead space and they'll upload just music and they'll put a text overlay that says something it might be a verse it might be a whatever those are very popular also and so again another thing if i'm in the car my husband's taking too long i'll just be like hmm no music on it it's just me pondering and then later i just have those random videos that I can then throw some music on from the YouTube library and then put a text overlay, or if I put it on Instagram or whatever. And so I would encourage you to look, if you're on TikTok, look at the style, the videos, uh, of the ones that are doing well, those kinds of things. Um, look at the ones on Instagram and stuff like that. And just start taking notes of how you see they're being done 
And that kind of lets you know. But again, the whole part about being weird for us Christian women, we don't usually just walk around taking random videos of ourselves in weird places. But that helps you create a content. Like if you don't have the perfect moment because everybody in your house is noisy when you were going to be recording videos, you have those, those silent videos that you can just add music and an overlay to. And then that way you're able to have co continuous content that you could add without having the effort of like recording yourself live, like speaking or whatever. Um, Snaptick, S-N-A-P-T-I-K. So it's Snaptick app. The app doesn't, I think you have to pay for it. But if you go to Snaptick, just the website on your phone or on the computer, you go to TikTok, get the copy link and paste it in there. And then it downloads the, the MP4 file. So on your phone, it'll download it to your folders and you open your folders. And I'll make a video that like walks through a screen share of this and then save from the folder to your camera roll. It's an extra step. Um, if I'm doing it for YouTube, I just do them on my computer because it's easier for YouTube on the computer. Same thing for those of you who have your one. If you've been doing videos or reels on Instagram, right? You already have published them. You can actually use a site called instagramsave.com. Get the copy link for the video. Go to the video on your Instagram, like here uh, on the computer. Get the copy link. Paste that into the instagramsave.com little box and it'll download the file without the mark, watermark. That's what I did. I had done videos on Instagram for a while. And when I got into my TikTok phase, I was like, I have all this content already. So I went through and downloaded all those old videos and then uploaded them into TikTok. And so I had a whole bunch of material like just sitting there. And I will stress this. It may take you a little bit to find your jam, to find your space in here. Like each of us has a different audience um, and you kind of have to learn how your audience engages with, co with content to figure out, you know, like I dance. Do you have to dance? No, does dancing help? Kinda. I'm like a little extra as my kids call them, animated, I'm just me. But that doesn't mean you need to be that way, right? Cause you're trying to attack who attract people based on you. And so you need to be you in the video. And, but finding your sweet spot of, of your style and you know, whatever. It may take you a few things, a few tries to get to that point. Like when I first started doing them, I thought I had to be all on here like, hey guys. And I was like, yeah, I look so boring and that is not me. And so then I was like, okay, let me step back and get a little more extra. Again, that's the do my daughter uses that word for me. Um, and just trying different things to see, like Anne Marie, she once told me, if y'all don't know her, she's busy, blessed women. <laughs> she, she told me one time, she's, I don't know, she's a grandmother. I don't know how old she is, but she's older than me. She's like, I am never dancing on social media. Yeah, she's a liar. She's dancing <laughs> on social media now, and she's loving it, right? Like, so don't ever say never. <laughs> never say never. But she's doing it in a way that reflects the message she's trying to promote, you know? And so that's why I say you find your, don't be afraid to try things. Don't be afraid to step out of your comfort zone in here. The thing that you're like, they look so dumb doing that. Just try it. <laughs> that might be the thing that really gets you kind of moving forward. I mean, within reason, there's certain things I won't do, like bad words and stuff like that, you know, but um, yeah, video is fun. It's, it's a more creative way to get, get ahead in this world, but do know this things change. And in this blogging influencer, whatever you want to call it, you're never going to finally get it right. Cause as soon as you figure it out, something's going to change. And that is just going to be forever the story. And so being flexible, being, you know, able to change up things, try something new. That's really going to be the deciding factor for how far you're able to grow with this. <clears throat> and you don't have to be all so, um, Go ahead, Hannah. Okay, so I wanted to say we shouldn't be asked, we shouldn't be scared. I have two questions. Um, we shouldn't be scared if we don't have subscribers. Like as a new 
um, video maker. We shouldn't be scared if we don't have subscribers only for the first one year or something. And also we shouldn't be scared if, because I have some controversial topics, I'm not really controversial, but I wrote a blog post about kissing, not kissing and cuddling, why dating? And I know that putting that up on, for the whole world to hear, I will get a lot of criticism, like how dare you say we shouldn't kiss and cuddle and all of that. So I just wanted to know how do I deal with that? And what about if I don't get subscribers because I'm actually saying the things that the Bible wants me to say. So that is a really good question. Um, and I'm actually, I'm gonna do a whole video about that, but I wanna mention it here since we're talking about video. How do you deal with negative criticism I, AKA comment trolls, that's what I call them. It's an ugly word, but it is what it is that they, that as a Christian influencer, you are gonna get more than anybody else. Any other niche in the world, you're gonna be a target. Um, it's almost like they're waiting. Oh, that Christian just posted something. Let's go attack her, right? <laughs> you're gonna get in social media. You're gonna see it on your YouTube comments. You sometimes will see it on your blog comments. And there's, Number one, you have to be confident and firm in what you, when you write something and if that's what you believe, just know people are, the haters are gonna hate. Like the enemy is going to come at you with all everything, right? And unfortunately online, the devil's got more mil, more minions than we can count, right? <laughs> and so you have to know that going into this, it's not going to be pretty. So you have to put your blinders on. You can delete comments, fortunately. I delete some. Uh, I used to delete them all the time on my blog, but now I don't. On social media, it's a little different because on social media, you can reply to comments with video. Uh, Instagram and TikTok enables you to do that. And so don't ever not put something out because you know that people are gonna come at you negative. Because, I mean, anything we say about Jesus, you got a whole line of haters lining up to come at you. That's just part of this game, okay? And so to not put forth something that is biblical simply because you don't want to deal with that, you have to know going into this that that is going to happen and be confident and firm in what you've said. Now, do we all have the right answer from the Bible? I mean, depending on anybody you talk to, everybody has a different version of what that verse means. So that's not what I'm talking about. But in dealing with comment trolls, number one, you can totally just delete it. You have that right, you have that option. Personally, I am now doing more of a, not necessarily to, because you, got, you have people who comment stupid things just to do it because they want to spur you up. They don't even probably mean what they say. Their whole point is to get an argument started. The best way for any, how do you take down an enterprise? You get them to kill each other, right? You get them fighting. And I've always said the downfall of Christianity will be us Christians because we fight. And when, when trolls come in and say things and they get us fighting each other, but then you spend all this time arguing with a door. The doors got no common sense. They're just there to be there. And so trying to say this in the nicest way possible. Sometimes when I get talking about this, I remember my military days and I'm like, I can't speak like that no more. So, um, but you can respond, not in an argumentative way, but in a way that shows others that not all Christians are argumentative, right? And so just kind of know that. I mean, at the end of the day, if it really, really makes you uncomfortable, just delete the comment, but I would leave the comment and allow the conversation to happen. Um, and especially on YouTube because comments and on social media comments do help your algorithm, but you just have to be very mindful and aware to not respond in a way that like, don't let them lure you into an argument, I guess. Right. Um, I had people joining, I was doing live Bible study on TikTok every morning. Uh, we were going through the Psalms. And as soon as I would go live, it's like they were standing outside the door. Oh, she's going live. And they'd get on there like, your God sucks. And they would just say horrible things, you know? And so I'm like, oh yeah, I see you. Or they would ask me, how do you feel about the abortion ban? I'm like, we're here to talk about the Psalms. Why are you asking me that? Like that's, so you just ignore it. That, okay. Yeah, I see you. Not today, Satan. We're talking about the Psalms here. So 
and you just kind of learn your way of deflecting. It's almost like, you know how Wonder Woman has those braces on her wrist? That's how it is for every Christian influencer, okay? <laughs> when you go online, you're like, <laughs> so just kind of know that. And But do not ever be afraid of putting something out there. Do not let the haters cause you to not do it. Because that's that's what they're there for. They want to stop you from sharing God's message. So yeah, just put on your your Wonder Woman. <laughs> Work it. So the subscribers, the subscribers uh, might come later while the blog is building. While my blog is growing, the subscribers might come later. So I shouldn't be bothered about subscribers for now. I should just go ahead and make my video. You'll actually probably get more subscribers to your YouTube faster than you do on your blog. Just because people will subscribe to your channel if they truly like your content and want to follow it. And there will be people who do. So, yeah, I wouldn't worry about the subscribers. Just okay. whatever God has said for you to put out there, put it out there. Okay, man. Okay. I need to make a cartoon. <laughs> Christian women online be like, cha, cha, cha. Yeah. I know now why my daughter calls me extra. So, okay. What were you going to say? I don't know what about the apps you talked about, the YouTube body um, app you talked about. Are you yeah. going to talk about it? How yeah, so it? I have a couple of videos um, that I just finished up. So I will share those this week. I don't want to go too in detail here just for the sake of time. Um, but I, it'll be a walkthrough on how to use TubeBuddy to do keyword research. Um, and then also how to like setting up your profile, the SEO for your actual YouTube channel, not necessarily the videos. Um, and so I'll get those shared in our Facebook group this coming week. Well, can keywords everywhere be used for YouTube research as well? It can, it's just not as good. It's very limited in what it gives you, but you can totally use it as a starting point. Yeah. Okay. So thank you very much, man. Thank you. All right, y'all. Well, it's going on 120 four here. So it's been a little, almost an hour and a half. Um, so I hope this was helpful. I hope y'all have some good takeaways. And I hope many of you start kind of diving into the video. You are welcome to share what you're doing in our Facebook group so that we can give you feedback and help you make it better before if you're not ready to put it out there for the world yet. You can just from your phone, if you don't share it to social media, you should record it on your phone, share the MP4 file as a post in our group and then say, hey, here's my first try at video. Can y'all tell me what you think or whatever? Um, and that way we can help you get better. And I will have more training on the technical stuff like editing videos and all that. Um, but yeah, if y'all have questions, always post those questions in the group because then that lets me know where I need to focus my tutorials at. Um, so yeah, any final, final anything? All right, y'all, so I will have the schedule for the next trainings out here shortly, uh, probably Monday. I'll give you all a list of all the trainings that we're going to have over the next few months and the dates and everything. And if y'all need anything else or would like a specific topic, just let me know um, and I can figure that into the schedule as well. All right, y'all have a great weekend and I will see y'all later. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.